reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved, had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things, because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls. For your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I ha have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
I got good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is it's not 52 degrees in here like it was at 7.30 this morning for Mass. The bad news is I tried to get those bells to work, but they won't budge. <laughs> if you want to climb up the bell tower, they made a request. They wanted the bells to be ringing as they leave the church, so we're going to work on them, though, all right? But we did give it an honest try, and nothing happened. Well, the lights dimmed a little bit when I pushed the button, so... <laughs> We're here today to celebrate, as we do each Sunday, sacraments, the Eucharist, of course, but here we also celebrate another sacrament of marriage. Sacraments are visible signs given to us by Jesus, totally as gift that we do not deserve, but he gives them to us so that we may receive God's abundant grace to face the challenges of this world. Visible sign. Every one of those sacraments has visibility within it. Signs are always pointing us to something else, something far greater than themselves. So let's just focus on marriage for all of us who live out that sacrament in your married lives. Indeed, it is a very visible sacrament. But what is it pointing to? As I said, these visible signs, these signs are pointing to something far greater than themselves. And I always like to use the analogy of, of a mirror. I used to do this when I taught high school religion many, many, many years ago. But when it got time for the seniors to study the sacrament of marriage, I used to always put up a large mirror right in the middle of the classroom. Imagine that. I was pretty crazy in those days, and I usually pulled stunts like that, but uh, it got their attention. You got to get their attention. And so the mirror is up. And of course, they all look at it, and they're all wondering, what is crazy Father Jim up to now? And the first few days of the class, I didn't say anything at all. I ignored the mirror as if it wasn't even there, right in the middle of the classroom. Well, finally, after three or four classes, Father, why do you got this huge mirror right in the middle of the classroom? Because it's there to remind you of what marriage is all about. They still didn't understand. You could tell by their puzzled looks on their faces so I says, I want you to think about this now. Imagine it's your wedding day. Remember, I'm speaking to these seniors who are 17 years old. You know, it's still a number of years down the road, but it's your wedding day. And I want you to imagine that you are with your spouse, whoever he or she will be, and you are in that mirror standing with your spouse. You're the reflection in the mirror. And then I ask the question, I says, and who's the real thing standing in front of the mirror? The greatest bridegroom of all, Jesus Christ and the bride is his church, us. You know, the Bible, that big, giant, thick book that we all probably have at home, sometimes we're a little afraid to open it up because it looks so intimidating. But I'll make it simple for you. The Bible is really the greatest love story ever told. It's a story about God who created us and who wants to take us for himself in the greatest love story ever told, as I said. That's really what the whole Bible's about. And God so loved this world that he sent his only son into this world, Jesus, in the flesh, became one of us, became all things except sin that we share with him in our humanness. 
to show us that love. He purchased for himself a bride. He did it by the blood of that cross. Because as our Lord also says, there's no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And he certainly proved that to us. The sacrament of marriage is our way of reflecting the perfect love that Jesus has for us. Now, granted, every reflection is not perfect. None of us are perfect. But that doesn't mean we reach or strive for perfection because we are called to be perfect as God is perfect. Now, do you think it's easy to be perfect? But we're asked to try. And that's why God gives us these sacraments, the grace, the strength, the very life of God within us to help us. And all we need to do is to cooperate with that grace and just as Jesus wants to be very intimate with us, married couples are invited to that same intimacy with each other. It's really so simple. In that second reading, that was a special reading for marriages, that St. Paul summarizes it all so much. It's all about that genuine love not just the human love, not just the feelings and emotions. We're talking about the highest love that there is. And I'm sure, Jeff and Anna, you know that anything that is good in this life takes a lot of hard work. Ask any married couple here who has been married more than just a handful of years, and they will tell you that it it takes a lot of sacrifice, compromises, communication, but most importantly is make sure you invite Jesus into this love because he'll give you all the help you need. In a moment, you're going to go up here before all of us. I don't marry you. If I married them, I'd be getting into trouble, right? It's the only sacrament that the priest doesn't minister it. The couple ministers this sacrament to each other. I just witness it and bless it, and we're all here with smiles on our faces, and our prayers are with you today. I think this is perhaps one of the ideal ways to celebrate a marriage as well. Not that for many of our couples who do the Saturday early afternoon weddings, that that's wrong. But this is the way the early church did weddings. The whole community was there. And it's good for us to be here today. So it begins today. Just like your baptism, Jeff was just newly baptized with Jeffrey, his son, just this past Easter. But just like our baptism, it's not just today, it's for the rest of our life. The long day of our baptism, the long day now of our marriage. May you have many, many happy years together. And may God's blessings be with you as we pray for you today and all days.